Hello, my name is Tony Beers, and this is Movie Grades. Some say he looks like ultimate Peter Parker. No, he does not. You know who he looks like? That's right, the guy from the Twilight movies. He doesn't act like Peter Parker in this movie. There's one scene where Flash Thompson is bullying this other student, and Peter comes in and sticks up for his other student. Now, first of all, it would be Peter being bullied, not some other student. And this is before Peter learns about responsibility and caring for other people's and not being selfish. So since he hasn't learned this yet, he wouldn't stick up for this other student. He'd probably just walk away. Now Peter is still a good kid, but he's still very flawed. Like I said, he's selfish so he would probably just walk away. There's a similar scene like this which takes place after Peter gets his powers where Flash is picking on other students on this basketball court and Peter sticks up for this student but he takes it a little too far in my opinion. He starts off teasing Flash you know, telling him to take the ball from him which he can't because of his spider powers and which is all fine and good and Flash deserves this for sure but then Peter takes the ball runs with it jumps like 20 feet in the air and dunks it and breaks the basketball hoop and the glass on behind it and he's starting to become just like the bullies that picked on him and besides, wouldn't the other students become a little bit suspicious that this boy who is not very athletic, who is very much a nerd, all of a sudden jumps 20 feet in the air and dunks a basketball? As soon as Spider-Man appears, wouldn't they be like, hey, that must be that Peter Parker kid because he can jump 20 feet in the air. He's not doing a very good job of keeping his identity a secret. And there's another scene like this where Peter catches a car thief and jokes around with him and everything. And it starts off being funny, but then it just gets sadistic. I mean, Peter uses his humor to distract and annoy his enemies during a fight. But after the fight is over and he's captured the villain, he doesn't continue to humiliate and torture this villain. Once he captures him, he's done. It's over with. But he just goes too far here and this is the big joke in the movie that they show in the trailer and for those of you who say well he at least he's joking more in this movie first of all he did joke a lot in the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies and second of all this is basically it this is what you get for a joke this this one time and he does this maybe one other time fighting the lizard, but that's it. Two jokes as Spider-Man in the whole movie. So I don't see how he's any more witty or, or joking than the other Spider-Man movies. Now, as I said before, Captain Stacy dies in this movie. But before he dies, he makes Peter promise him that he will keep Gwen out of this. In other words, he wants him to break up with Gwen because he knows that as Spider-Man, Peter's going to be in a lot of danger because he's going to make enemies as Spider-Man. So Peter goes along with this. He kind of breaks up with Gwen and... and about a minute later, he's back together with Gwen again. So good going, Peter. You broke a promise you made to your girlfriend's dying father. What a hero. So at the end credit scene of this movie, Dr. Kirk Connors is sent to a mental institution, and he gets a visit by 
dun 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 Norman Osborn. And he asks Connors, did you tell him about his father? And Connors says something like, leave that boy alone. So in other words, they're setting up for the sequel that the Green Goblin will be the villain in the sequel. Just like they did with Batman Begins. So if there's any doubt that this movie is nothing but a ripoff of Batman Begins, there you go. And if Spider-Man keeps going down this route, it probably means that Venom is going to be the main villain in the third movie and the Black Cat would, is going to help out. And here's some minor things, but there's still things that I missed in this movie. And number one is the Daily Bugle. In this movie, the Daily Bugle is in it, but it, it's there as a TV station, not a newspaper, which makes sense since, you know, newspapers are almost out of here. They're almost a thing of the past. But the thing is... We don't get to see any of the characters, any of the staff. We don't get to see J. Jordan Jameson, which is a huge disappointment to me. The second thing is, there's no Harry Osborn in this. Now, I know that Peter is a super nerd and he doesn't have many friends, but he can't have just one. He can't have Harry Osborn in there. Oh, and here's a big disappointment. Spider-Man doesn't have his spider sense. I mean, there's scenes in this movie where the lizard sneaks up on him all the time. Now, if he had a spider sense, there's no way the lizard could sneak up on him. And there's never a scene establishing that he does have a spider sense. I mean, at least in the first original Raimi Spider-Man movies, they had that cool scene where Spider-Man could see things in slow motion. And they don't do anything like this here. Another thing is that Spider-Man never tries to make money using his powers. And that was a big thing in the comic. He's very selfish and he only wants things for himself and he only wants money. Just like any other teenager, he only wants to use his power to make money. Now, he doesn't have to try to become a wrestler. Maybe they could do something else. But they never show him wanting to use his powers to make money. And lastly, Uncle Ben never has that famous line, with great power comes great responsibility. He never says this in the movie. Now, he kind of says this in a different way, but come on, that line is classic. Everyone knows that line, and it pretty much sums up what Spider-Man is all about in one sentence. So, is this movie more comic accurate or any better than the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movie? No, not at all. Is it even better than Spider-Man 3, the worst in that Spider-Man trilogy? And uh, that's a tough call. I would have to say that Spider-Man 3 is actually better than this movie because it's more exciting and has more action in it. And the mood is much lighter. It's not so dark and depressing, even with the black suit. Now, overall, the action, the acting, and most of the special effects are pretty good. However, Spider-Man doesn't learn responsibility from Uncle Ben's death right away. The first hour or so of this movie is completely boring and repetitive and derivative of the original movie. The tone is way too dark for a Spider-Man movie. The subplot about his parents goes absolutely nowhere. Peter doesn't act or look as he should. The lizard's face looks very goofy. And this whole movie is basically a ripoff of Batman Begins. The only real reason to see this movie on the big screen is if you absolutely have to see the lizard. Otherwise, I say avoid it. Now, if I wasn't such a Spider-Man fan, I wouldn't be so hard on this movie. For an average summer blockbuster movie, it's actually pretty good, but since it's a Spider-Man movie, I expect more. I expect it to be better. If I knew nothing about Spider-Man and I had not seen the Sam Raimi movies already, I would probably enjoy this movie. But since I know the character of Spider-Man and I've already seen the Sam Raimi movies, I've seen this story before and I've seen it done better. So, my final grade for the not so amazing Spider-Man is a D plus. My name is Tony Beers and I'll see you next time.